How do we know the universe is expanding? It's such an important thing, I want to spend a few minutes on that. Well, we do, by, as these two guys on the, on the plane out there in, 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 uh, near Arizona say to one another, I love hearing that lonesome wail of the train whistle as the magnitude of the frequency of the wave changes due to the Doppler effect. What they're pointing out is that when a train comes towards you, the train whistle sounds higher. When a train moves away from you, the train whistle sounds lower. And that same principle was used by Hubble and others. The same is true for light for very different reasons. So when we look at distant galaxies, if they're moving away from us, the light, which is a wave, gets stretched out. The longer wavelength part of light, or the red end of the spectrum, so it's called redshifted. And galaxies are more and more redshifted the further and further they are away from us. So that's how we know their velocity. The velocity is easy. How do you know distance? That's really hard. The universe is a big place. And we don't have tape measures that are that big. We could determine the distance to the back of the room if I turned out all the lights and only one light was on and I knew it had a 100 watt light bulb by having an old fashioned camera, which none of us have anymore, that had light meter on it. And um, if there were 100 watts there and I was receiving one watt of light here, I know how that light spreads out as one over the square of distance. And so I could determine by how much wattage I was receiving here, knowing the wattage of that light bulb, how far away it was. The problem is the universe isn't full of 100 watt light bulbs. So we have to try and find the equivalent. We have to try and find what's called a standard candle. Something whose intrinsic brightness we understand. Therefore, when we look at it through a telescope, we see how bright it appears through the telescope and we work backwards to figure out how far it is. That's the hard part. That's why it's been so hard to determine the rate of expansion of the universe, because it's hard to find standard candles. This is, this is Hubble's original data from 1929. What he found was, in fact, that velocity is proportional to distance. Okay? And the great thing is he got the answer wrong by a factor of 10, which, um, which was an embarrassment at the time. If the universe were expanding this fast, you could calculate its age, and its age would be 1.5 billion years old. Now, as anyone knows, if you read any of Richard's books, you would know that, well, by, by 1929, we already knew the Earth was older than 1.5 billion years old. And so it was embarrassing that the universe was younger than the Earth. But the problem was, of course, he wasn't a bad astronomer, a bad scientist. The problem was trying to measure distance because he didn't have good standard candles. And we now have standard candles. And there's a whole galaxy, it's about a billion light years away. We're looking at it as it looked a billion years ago. But so many of those stars no longer exist. And here's an object that's just a, a, as bright as the whole center of the galaxy. You'd think it's a star that's near in our galaxy that just got caught in the picture frame. It's not. It's a star on the edge of that galaxy that has exploded. And exploding stars shine with the brightness of 10 billion stars. They're the brightest fireworks in the universe, supernovae. This is something that, that, that I wrote a whole book about, and someone asked me yesterday why I wrote that book. Because it is the most poetic thing I know about the universe. The amazing thing is that every atom in your body came from a star that exploded. And the atoms in your left hand probably came from a different star than your right hand. It really is the most poetic thing I know about physics. You are all stardust. You couldn't be here if stars hadn't exploded because the elements, the carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, iron, all the things that matter for evolution weren't created at the beginning of time. They're created in the nuclear furnaces of stars and the only way they can get into your body is if the stars were kind enough to explode. Even though only one occurs every hundred years per galaxy, there are enough galaxies that if you put your hand up in the night in, away from LA and looked in a dark spot in the sky and made a hole the size of a dime, with a large enough telescope, you could see 100,000 galaxies. And that means that even though stars explode once every 100 years per galaxy, in that little region with 100,000 galaxies, on a given night, you'll see 10 stars explode. The universe is huge and old, and rare things happen all the time. And so it's an amazing thing. And here's a, we can observe stars exploding, we can measure their brightness, we can measure their colors, and that has allowed us to, to, to produce a great standard candle. And after 75 years, we now can determine the expansion rate of the universe. This is a new Hubble diagram, much better than Hubble's. We now know the rate of expansion of the universe to 10%, not a factor of 10. And we therefore, in fact, we now know the age of the universe through other things extremely accurately to f almost four decimal places. 13.72 billion years is the age of the, year, of the universe. It's amazing that we can say that with a straight face and have scientific reasons to support that.